A warm greeting? Today is Thursday, June 27, 2024. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia. At the time of recording this video, it is 7 p.m. local time in the Eastern Caribbean, where we are closely monitoring Invest 95, which has a high probability of becoming a tropical depression as it moves westward. It is anticipated that by Monday it will be affecting the Lesser Antilles and eventually continue a westward trajectory potentially reaching the Western Caribbean region in the long term. Therefore, it is important for residents in the Lesser Antilles and the Western Caribbean to stay very alert to its development. In this video, I will be discussing the current structure of Invest 95, when it might develop into a tropical depression, the forecasted path, and the expected effects on the Lesser Antilles, which currently have the highest risk related to this disturbance. Additionally, we are keeping an eye on a strong tropical wave or Invest 94, which has a low probability of development before entering Belize and the Yucatan Peninsula. It may also have development chances in the southern Gulf of Mexico. Therefore, residents of Veracruz, Tamaulipas, the Yucatan Peninsula, and Belize should monitor its progress. Later, I will be recording another video to discuss this forecast and the expected rain in Central America and parts of southern and eastern Mexico. But let's see that as of 2 p.m., the National Hurricane Center has again increased the probabilities of cyclonic development related to Invest 95, which currently has a 60% chance of development in the next 48 hours and an 80% chance in the next 7 days as it continues to move mostly westward. We are very confident that it will become a tropical cyclone before reaching the Lesser Antilles. Today we have seen how the structure of Invest 95 continues to improve. We first observed the development of some outer bands, which are signs of cyclonic organization. In recent infrared satellite images, we can see it starting to generate strong thunderstorms near the center of circulation. If this organization continues, it is very likely that within the next 24 to 36 hours, we will have Tropical Depression 2 of the season, which will very likely become the second tropical storm of the season, or Tropical Storm Barrel. As we have discussed in recent days, typically in June, conditions in the tropical Atlantic are not favorable for the formation of tropical cyclones. However, Invest 95 has remained quite far south, which has kept the dry air and Saharan dust to the north, not interfering with the circulation. Additionally, as we can see in this image, it remains in a region with below normal wind shear, mainly due to an upper-level anticyclone right above the tropical wave. This anticyclone is likely to accompany it for at least the next five days as it moves into the Caribbean. Moreover, on its trajectory, it will be moving through regions with increasingly warmer sea surface temperatures. The combination of these two factors could result in continued strengthening as it moves westward. But the big question is how strong it could become as it approaches the Caribbean region. This is where the forecast has significant uncertainty. On the other hand, we have a good consensus on the trajectory models. Today, we are very confident that it will pass over the southern Lesser Antilles and south of Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic. Therefore, the danger for Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic has considerably decreased while it continues to increase for the central and southern Lesser Antilles Islands, and eventually for parts of Jamaica, Cuba, the Yucatan Peninsula, and even Central America. It is essential to stay alert to its progress due to the expected mostly westward trajectory. This is because the high-pressure system will remain strong over the next seven days, limiting the opportunity for it to gain latitude. Regardless of whether it strengthens significantly before reaching the Caribbean, look at the forecasted paths of the specialized models. There is good consensus that it will maintain a west or west-northwest trajectory for at least the next six to seven days, which would bring the center of circulation over the Lesser Antilles on Monday morning. Between Tuesday and Wednesday, it should pass south of Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, and Haiti. In the long term, there is uncertainty about whether it will move towards Cuba, Jamaica, or even Central America. Therefore, confidence in the trajectory forecast is quite high for at least the next five days. Starting Tuesday and Wednesday, we still do not know exactly what its path could be. However, it is important to inform residents of the Central and Southern Lesser Antilles that they should start preparing for the impact of a tropical cyclone. We currently anticipate it will arrive as a tropical storm or Category 1 hurricane. Later, I will show the expected effects in terms of rain and wind for some of the southern Lesser Antilles Islands. The major uncertainty we have at the moment is how strong it could become in the Caribbean region. Some models show it could become a Category 2 or Category 3 hurricane as it moves through the Eastern Caribbean Sea, while others show a strong tropical storm or Category 1 hurricane. This great uncertainty arises because we still do not know exactly how the wind shear will be when it moves through the Caribbean. And we also need to see how this potential cyclone behaves as it passes through the Eastern Caribbean, where historically, many cyclones have significantly weakened. Let's then look at the projections of the global models. But first, I want to invite you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Go to the bottom of the video and click the red button that says subscribe, 
Then click the bell so you receive notifications when I record new videos. Let's first look at the GFS model projection, which I must say is the most aggressive in terms of intensity. It continues to project that it could reach the Lesser Antilles as a Category 2 hurricane on Monday morning, specifically passing over areas of St. Lucia and Barbados. Therefore, it is important for residents of Martinique, St. Lucia, Barbados, St. Vincent, and the Grenadines to pay close attention to the forecasts. The GFS model maintains a westward trajectory, but with a Category 1 or 2 hurricane crossing the Eastern Caribbean region, it passes closer to the Dominican Republic, still at a relatively safe distance. At the moment, tropical storm conditions are not anticipated for the Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, or the Dominican Republic. Additionally, notice that it develops a second tropical wave, though it remains relatively weak at the moment, but I mention it because it could also bring more rain to the Lesser Antilles Arc. In about six to seven days, the GFS model has a tropical storm passing over or near Jamaica on Wednesday night. One thing we can analyze from this latest run is that the GFS model, despite having a Category 2 hurricane when it reaches the Lesser Antilles, weakens this potential cyclone as it moves through the Eastern Caribbean, likely due to some wind shear. In the long term, there are still doubts about exactly where it would move, but a west or west-northwest trajectory seems favored. On the other hand, let's look at the European model projection, which shows a similar trajectory, but the main difference is it has a tropical storm reaching the Lesser Antilles Arc on Monday morning, then maintaining a westward trajectory through the Eastern Caribbean, passing south of Jamaica on Wednesday morning, possibly as a tropical storm, and eventually reaching parts of Honduras and Nicaragua. Here we can see the significant difference between the GFS and the European models, though they at least agree it would move through this region as a tropical storm. For example, see the German model projection, which significantly weakens this future cyclone when it moves through the Caribbean and, in the latest projection, reduces it to a tropical wave passing south of the Dominican Republic and Haiti. This is definitely very possible, because conditions in the Eastern Caribbean may not be very favorable, and could significantly weaken this cyclone. However, that remains to be seen, as we do not have consensus among the models. If we analyze the European model members this afternoon, we have much greater consensus compared to what we had this morning. First, see that it is almost certain to pass over the southern Lesser Antilles, and then maintain a west-northwest trajectory, well south of Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands, as well as the Dominican Republic. Another important change is that this morning we had some members showing a powerful hurricane approaching the northeastern Caribbean. But this afternoon almost all keep it as a tropical storm moving through this area. This projection of remaining weak as it moves through the Eastern Caribbean makes a lot of sense, especially when talking about June. Also, see that most GFS model members maintain it as a tropical storm when it reaches the Caribbean, with very few showing a west-northwest trajectory approaching Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic. So, we can currently dismiss that possibility. However, we will remain attentive to any changes, but again, the most likely scenario is, it will move over the southern Lesser Antilles and continue westward in the Caribbean Sea. It is important to mention that this forecast can change, so we will continue monitoring, especially asking our followers in the southern Lesser Antilles to start considering that there is a high probability of being affected by a tropical storm or Category 1 hurricane on Monday next week. The consensus in trajectories is such that we can see the European, UK, American, and Canadian model members agree well on a trajectory over the southern Lesser Antilles and passing about 300 miles south of Puerto Rico and 300 kilometers south of the Dominican Republic. In the long term, eastern Cuba, Jamaica, Nicaragua, Honduras, the Yucatan Peninsula, and Belize will need to observe where this potential cyclone moves. The first threat will be to the Lesser Antilles, specifically Martinique, St. Lucia, Barbados, St. Vincent, and the Grenadines. Let's see the expected rain and winds in this region when the potential tropical storm or hurricane barrel moves through. Starting with rainfall estimates according to the GFS model, note that today it has some maximum accumulations that can range between 150 to 200 millimeters, particularly for St. Vincent and the Grenadines, as well as St. Lucia and Barbados. Some outer bands may also affect Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic on Tuesday and Wednesday next week. Additionally, See the European model projection with a more southern trajectory and a weaker system as a tropical storm, leaving between 75 to 125 millimeters of accumulated rain, affecting from Martinique to Trinidad and Tobago. This could cause some local flooding, so it is important to continue monitoring these model projections. Finally, see the wind gust projections. First, the GFS model which is quite aggressive in bringing a Category 2 or even Category 3 hurricane when it reaches the Caribbean. Although this projection seems exaggerated in intensity, if it comes true, some islands south of the Lesser Antilles could experience winds over 170 km per hour, with tropical storm winds from Martinique to St. Vincent and the Grenadines. For a more realistic projection like the European model, 
It currently projects winds between 50 to 100 km per hour, especially for areas where the center of circulation passes, likely Martinique, St. Lucia, Barbados, and St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The rest of the northern Lesser Antilles Islands could experience windy conditions with gusts up to 40 km per hour. Well, that's all for this video. I will continue closely monitoring the evolution of what may become Tropical Storm Barrel, particularly to keep our friends in the southern Lesser Antilles informed. I will also be alert to any unexpected changes that may pose a threat to the northern Lesser Antilles Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic. For now, the outlook seems favorable for this region. Well, with that, I say goodbye. I will update this forecast tomorrow morning. Until then, 